in light of all of that, I don't want to get too sidetracked, but in light of all that, we are going to have a debate today. We can't have the candidates, but they have, all, all of them, significant local organizations pushing their candidates' points of view forward and campaigning for them. So I thought it would be a good idea, this day, right before elections, to have a debate amongst the surrogates, the stand-ins, as it were, and that gives you a chance to ask some questions of the people that are pushing those candidates. We'll start it out this hour with representatives of Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. Next hour, we will bring in representatives of Donald Trump and John Kasich and Ted Cruz, and we'll be taking your calls throughout. 803-0930 is our number. We'd love to have you aboard. It's sort of a big primary debate, and let's uh, kick it off with the Democrats for uh, at least this first half hour. Len Lenahan is here. Here. former chair of the Erie County Democratic Party, and uh, these days uh, an elections commissioner here in Erie County. Right. Len, you're a supporter, obviously, of Hillary Clinton, I think? I definitely am, absolutely. All right, and B Brian Nowak is here. He's one of the organizers of Buffalo for Bernie, a group uh, that is basically pushing Bernie's candidacy locally. Brian, thanks for coming on in. Hey, thank you. L let's start with you, Brian, because I think uh, in some ways people know Len. Why are you active in this campaign, or to ask it another way, what has Bernie meant for you? What, how has he inspired you? Why are you doing what you do? Uh, I think Bernie Sanders is bringing out a message that uh, our economic and our political system is not working for regular people anymore. That economic inequality has been going, growing out of control for 40 years. Uh, Health care, college are becoming more unaffordable. Wages are stagnant. Uh, working people aren't getting a fair shake. And the kind of programs that Bernie's uh, affirming and proposing are meant to address those problems. A $15 an hour minimum wage to get us closer to a living wage, uh, you know, tuition-free public colleges to build on, you know, free K to 12 schooling, and you know, can go on and on with those specific ideas. But what Sanders is doing is starting to address this idea that we need to do something different to address economic inequality and to reconsider how we redistribute wealth in our society. We have a market system that distributes wealth, and it does a great job of, you know, of creating wealth, but as far as the distribution goes, it doesn't do so great. Sometimes you need to have state policy that helps take care of that. We have a system of tax credits that has been doing that for a long time, and what Sanders is doing is we need to reconsider the type of programs we, do, we have to update our system for the 21st century. Well, on one hand, why are you supporting Hillary Clinton? Well, there's, uh, l let's say there's three reasons, and then there's a fourth reason that I think is sort of what I call a bonus. I think number one is she's probably the most prepared person, the most qualified person to ever even seek this office. I'll even go that far to say. I mean, her background, obviously... Secretary of State, United States Senator, First Lady of the United States, but even beyond that, all she did from her days uh, leaving law school at Yale to in Arkansas, reforming the education system, fighting for women and children. Um, so she's prepared. Number two, and this is a political reason, I think she's got the best chance of beating the Republicans in November, which I think is very important, and you know, we can get back into that. Um, the third reason is that, as the New York Times said yesterday, and looking over both the Sanders and the, the Clinton agendas for uh, once they're in office, uh, that Hillary Clinton has the most detailed, thorough, and well-thought-out plans to uh, propose once she uh, is in office. And then number four is, I think, something... He those of us in New York State and Western New York in particular should be cognizant of. She was our senator for eight years. She knows us. She knows the leadership in this community on a first name basis. She, but more importantly, she knows the problems of this area. As uh, our senator, she worked on the very things that are now flourishing in Buffalo, the Buffalo Medical Campus, uh, the waterfront. She helped save the air base in, in Niagara Falls. Um, and another thing, it, it's, it's kind of unique, again, for New Yorkers and Western New Yorkers in particular. If she's elected, and if Chuck Schumer is elected uh, majority leader, which could happen with a big Clinton victory in November, New York State will be in a position to have two of the most powerful people in our country literally knowing us on a first-name basis, knowing the problems in this community, we're going to be at a strategic advantage uh, to help the people of New York State and Western New York, but certainly most of all, uh, the most important thing is the national debate here, and that is, I think she's the most prepared, 
most qualified. I think she's the person with the most thought out plans to take over. And I think she can beat the Republicans in November. Brian, jump on in here because I know there's things there that you probably don't necessarily agree with. Well, as far as beating the Republicans in November, I, I think this is one of the points that uh, Sanders has brought out and his supporters have. Uh, you look at the caucus wins that he's had, you know, 70, 80 percent of the vote in these caucuses. Uh, the enthusiasm is on his side, you know. Uh, and Sanders has been doing really well with independents. There are 43 percent of voters all across the country, and Sanders is winning them two to one in a lot of places, sometimes even better. Uh, I think come November, if we have somebody, let's say John Kasich, manages to get the nomination in the second or third ballot, uh, Clinton has had a really hard time in national polls against Kasich. Kasich has beat her in a lot of these. Sanders has a chance to beat Kasich, and he's uh, he's trounced him in these polls as well. Uh, so, and even against someone like Cruz, that Cruz has, has beat Clinton in some of these national polls. But Sanders is somebody that, in his home state, he's getting the independent vote, he's getting Democrats, and he's gotten 25% of Republicans in his most recent re-election to the Senate. Hey, Dave, Dave, can I? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Let's, uh, let's talk to each other. I, uh, th this is not a, a 10 minutes for you, though, Mr. Lenahan. Sure. We're not going to conduct it that way, so go ahead. Yeah. Jump absolutely. Well, first, let me compliment the campaign that Bernie Sanders has run. I mean, we as Democrats are proud of what he's accomplished. He's done a great job. Brian here is a, a very talented young man, and uh, we're, we're hoping that, that we come all together in November to, to win. But I think Hillary Clinton has shown that, one, she appeals to a diverse uh, base of support. You know, the typical swing state that will be up for grabs in November uh, is diverse. If you look at Florida, if you look at Virginia, if you look at even Ohio, if you look at Colorado, you look at Nevada, you're going to need to show you can bring in supports among African Americans, Hispanics, Asians, and of course, women. Women are going to make up 58% of the 56 to 58% of the voter base in this election. She's running to be the first uh, female president in our history. But more importantly than that, uh, Bernie Sanders is had the advantage of not coming under attack in his career from the Republican attack machine. And let's face it, for 25 years, the Clintons have been under fire by the right wing of the Republican Party. They've spent literally billions attacking the Clintons. Everything we need to know about Hillary Clinton is already out there, and she's still uh, beating the Republicans in November. I think Bernie Sanders, if he was to win the nomination, certainly Democrats would support him. Uh, at the other hand, he has never been under attack and will be so uh, like he's never seen before. There are super PACs with billionaires. You know, just recently we saw a statistic that just 53 people in our country have funded half of all the funding that's gone into super PACs. And I would like to remind everybody listening today that 95% of those billionaires are Republicans. 803-0930 is our number if you'd like to join the conversation. Len Lenahan is here as a surrogate for Hillary Clinton. Brian Nowak is here as a surrogate for Bernie Sanders. Next hour, we're going to switch uh, to the Republican side, and we're going to kick around some of their ideas in just a little bit. But if you'd like to get aboard, we'd love to have you here now, 803-0930. I want to talk... Go ahead, Brian. Say on, the attack, yeah. on the attack line front, uh, there's not dirt on Sanders to pull out. There's nothing there. And that's you know, there's a there's a there's a history of things that may be controversial, and you know, I understand the point that uh, you're getting at. But um, if there were things that could be used against Sanders to disarm him in a general election. I think those things have come out already in the primary. I think that more and more people dig into his writings and his record, there's not much more to find than what we've seen already. His writings in the early 1970s that have been criticized, you know, his, uh, his positions on guns, which is something that's been hammered a lot by the Clinton campaign, and, and you know, other things that have been brought out. Uh, they're really minor in comparison. I think both of the candidates that we have have been sufficiently vetted, and anything that is uh, a red stain on their record, the public knows already. So regardless of which Democrat wins the primary, I think the Democratic Party has a good chance of keeping the White House because of the people that the Republicans have put up. I want to talk a little bit about taxes and tax reform. It's been said, uh, Brian, that the Bernie Sanders plan would basically raise taxes $13.6 trillion. That's a number that I'm thinking people look at and it scares them. Well, most of that is has to do with health insurance. The Sanders plan for health insurance is a Medicare for all single payer plan. Uh, the legislation is introduced in, in, by Sanders into uh, into the Congress on the Senate side. So, 
What Sanders' plan is, is yes, people's taxes are going to go up a couple hundred bucks a year, the average person. However, their health care costs are going to go down by thousands of dollars. It's in that savings. If you told me thousands I, of dollars because he's going to go to a universal health care plan, of, yeah, single exactly, payer, exactly. And people are like where are these savings that are going to come from, you know, it, economies of scale. There's going to be fewer purchasers, and the rates are going to be lowered. Uh, administrative costs are going to go down. Advertising costs are going to go down, and it's going to lead to a system that is less expensive. We've seen that the French and the British and these other countries can operate a more efficient system. It less, you know, with less cost, and especially in the United States here, yeah, we do have the best health care, but for who? For maybe half the population. Rebuttal on Lenahan. Well, there's no doubt that uh, there's going to be a healthy debate about taxes in this selection, and uh, Hillary Clinton has put out a detailed plan about uh, helping cut taxes for middle class families. A four percent surtax on income over five million, and then a middle class tax cut in there as well. That's right. Basically, which she she's also frankly willing to give businesses. Uh, 15% tax cut in return for profit sharing. You know, we're at a time now where corporate profits are the highest I think they've ever been in our history. At the same time, wages are stagnant and middle class families are not getting races. And something obviously has to be done about that. I think the Sanders and Clinton campaign agree on that. I think she feels that specific tax cuts for middle class families to help them deal with uh, education. She's a $2,500 uh, tax incentive for uh, college education. She's got uh, tax incentives for child care um, and for health care as well. Doesn't her plan cap deductions overall, though, at, at something like 28%? Um, yeah, exactly. But I also think, that, you know, there's going to be a debate about the best way to do this once she's elected and once she's in the House. But the, the fact of the matter is uh, she has a, a, a tax plan that is geared toward cutting taxes for middle class families, making the wealthy pay their fair share, but giving incentives to companies that uh, raise wages and raise benefits by 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 profit sharing and giving them a 15% tax cut if they do that. Overseas in the war on ISIS next, we have to take a quick break and then your phone calls 803-0930 if you'd like to join the conversation. We've got two uh, stand-ins here basically for Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton. Len and Lenahan from the Clinton camp. He's an Erie County Elections Commissioner. And Brian Nowak is here from Buffalo for Bernie. More to come and your calls have one line open right now. We'll get to the calls after this. 803-0930. It's Hardline on News Radio 930 WBEN. This is Michael Savage, and you're listening to the home of the Savage Nation in Buffalo, weeknights 10 till 1, News Radio 930 WBEN. Artists see things differently, but attorneys do too. Woods Oveat Gilman, the art of representing people. Main Place Tower, Buffalo, New York, 716-248-3200. Prior results do not guarantee a similar outcome. Whether you're buying or selling, think Wink. Century 21 Winkelhofer, the real estate company that has made experience, knowledge, reliability, and ethics a family tradition. This is Amy of Century 21 Winkelhofer, making experience and ethics a family tradition. Let our family help move yours. Call us at 634-6220. You can count on Century 21 Winkelhofer's expert team to answer all your questions about buying, selling, investment properties, or that special dream home. When you think real estate, think Wink. C21Wink.com. That's C21Wink.com. At Great Lakes Building Systems, our business is protecting your business. We deliver state-of-the-art solutions to protect your business and employees from physical threats. I'm John Whiten, president of Great Lakes Building Systems. We built our reputation on delivering integrated notifier, fire alarm, and complex security systems that protect hospitals, schools, industrial complexes, and commercial property. New York State recently adopted a new law mandating the installation of carbon monoxide sensors in all commercial and public buildings. Call Great Lakes Building Systems. We can help you better understand this law and provide a solution for your facility. Whether you need a new installation, service on an existing system, or central station monitoring, Great Lakes Building Systems is your company of choice. Call us today at 892-LAKE. That's 892-L-A-K-E. Or go online to gobs-inc.com. Great Lakes Building Systems. Our business is protecting your business. I want my child to be a leader. I want my daughter to be empowered. 
I want my kids to be successful. I want my son to be spiritual. Here in Western New York, you have the choice of many fine education options for your child. Yet, time and time again, so many families of all faiths have chosen Catholic schools. It's not surprising. Catholic schools are ranked among the very best schools in all of Western New York. An exceptional education, leadership, and spiritual formation. Traditions at Western New York's Catholic schools for nearly 170 years. You can have faith in a Catholic education. I am a leader. I am empowered. I am spiritual. I am successful. I am Catholic education. Come see the difference at Western New York's Catholic schools. To find a school near you, go to wnycatholicschools.org. Pregnancy can be overwhelming for new and expecting parents, but hearing what's important for a healthy pregnancy from expert OBGYNs can ease your worries. Millard Fillmore Suburban Hospital will host a free community education class to share the habits women can embrace for a healthy pregnancy. Come out Thursday, April 21st from 6 to 7.30 in the evening. Call 568-6700 to register. Eating habits, exercise tips, risk factors, and preventing preterm labor will be discussed. And you'll also receive a personal tour of the mother, baby, and neonatal intensive care units. Don't miss this free class. Healthy Habits for Pregnancy at Millard Fillmore Suburban Hospital's Healthy You. Thursday, April 21st at 6 o'clock. Reserve your seat by calling 568-6700. That number again, 568-6700. Or register online at kaleidahealth.org slash healthy you. Only at Millard Fillmore Suburban Hospital. There's a party with your name on it, and it benefits the Champ Foundation and Pearson Syndrome. Hi, it's Janet Snyder. Join me, along with baby Joe Macy, Andrew Peters, Sue O'Neill, and a whole bunch of other great people at the Champ Foundation's benefit, Sunday, April 24th, from 1 to 6 p.m. at Buffalo Riverworks. Now, this is going to be a party for a great cause, but let me underline party, party, party. And there's a boxing ring and baby Joe Macy, so my goal at this party is going to be to get baby Joe in the ring for a great cause. There's also going to be music from the all-star band, Hundreds of great auction items, including a vacation at the Chautauqua Institute, a vacation home in the Adirondacks, a $5,000 billboard advertising package, a studio experience from some of your favorite Entercom radio stations, and even sweet tickets to a Bills game with a real Hall of Famer. If you love a great party and a great cause, join me, Janet Snyder, at Buffalo Riverworks, Sunday, April 24th from 1 to 6 p.m. Tickets available at thechampfoundation.org. I'm John Doyle, president of Doyle Security. Too often people wait until after a break-in to get a home alarm system, when if they had called before, there's a good chance the break-in would have been prevented. We've been protecting New York State for close to 100 years, and now with Doyle Security's live two-way voice, there's no better way to protect your home and family. Call today to get your $25 per month live two-way voice home alarm. D-O-I-L-E, Doyle Security, call 1-866-GO-DOYLE. It's Hardline on News Radio 930 WBEN. Good morning. This is Dave Debo. We're doing a debate today. No, we don't have the candidates, but we do have their leading West New York stand ins here. This hour, or at least for another 15 minutes or so, we have Lun Lenahan on behalf of Hillary Clinton and Bernie Nowak from Buffalo for Bernie on behalf of uh, Bernie Sanders. 803 0930 is the number. We'll get to the calls in just a second, but very quickly, guys, I, I put out a call uh, last week on Facebook and I said if, if you had the candidates in front of you, what would one question would you ask same question every candidate and someone said this what are you planning on doing about isis and the war overseas len we'll start with you well first uh, hillary clinton as secretary of state has already dealt with this problem uh her feeling is that we need to build a coalition throughout the throughout the world to hone in on the isis threat uh they're very sophisticated when it comes to communications using the internet um as secretary of state she has pioneered uh the access to the internet for uh, you know so many countries uh, so they can hone in on what actually what ISIS is doing. But I think most importantly, I think she feels we need to uh, pull together with our allies um, in, in strategic plans to hit them from the air and to beat them on the ground with intelligence, uh, fighting their uh, sophisticated communication systems with more updated um, 
uh, tracking systems that we do in conjunction with our allies throughout the world. So I think when it comes to dealing with ISIS, she's been dealing with this problem as Secretary of State, and I think she's the most prepared to deal with Brian, it. Brian, no, like same question. Office. Jump on in. We talk about how qualified every candidate is to be president, and there's a difference between being qualified and having good judgment. Uh, I think there's a fundamental difference between Clinton and Sanders. Here's the line about the war on Iraq. Right. right. And it's not just the war in Iraq. And he voted against the war, and he knew it. It's a matter of how you deal with this, with Syria. Uh, you know, having a no-fly zone over Syria when the Russians have significant influence in that airspace is going to aggravate our relationship with the Russians. Uh, and in all these sorts of foreign policy situations, Clinton has shown to have poor judgment, in my view. You know, in taking the case of Honduras, there was a she enabled a uh, an unconstitutional coup that led to a military dictatorship, which it aggravated illegal immigration. Well, and I can't let it hang, but we do have to get calls quickly. Yeah, let, let me just say this. Um, when it comes to uh, foreign relations, uh, dealing with world problems, as Secretary of State, she's the one that brought the coalition together to impose sanctions on Iran, which pushed them to the negotiating team with us. She personally negotiated the ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. She literally brought peace to Israel at a, at a very critical time in their history. All right, let's um, take again, a, her experience in, is definitely a major uh, advantage here. Yeah, what, and the thing that's concerning for me is that Beacon Consulting Group advises her, and they're advising Ted Cruz. You know, she's already said that she embraces Henry Kissinger's ideas and his approach to world affairs, and that's very concerning because, I mean, Kissinger was an architect of the Vietnam War. No, what Kissinger really said, Brian, was that of all the Secretary of State that he has seen in his lifetime, she runs the best organized, prepared State Department that he has ever seen. But is administration different from policies? Can he say, yes, I like the way you ran it, but I mean, he's, he was a, a conservative Republican under Nixon. Uh, right. I'm just saying that, you know, she knew what she was doing as Secretary in terms of State. Of administration, she did it well. Not necessarily what she believed, though, no? And, no, but, you know, let me say this. I think th there's no doubt the Secretary of State, she's got major advantages in her, with her um, experience as a world leader. But also, at the end of the day, this campaign is going to be about rising incomes, jobs for people in this country. And I really think we need to spend some time this morning talking about what her plans are for creating jobs and the debate on that. It's on my list. We will get there. Uh, in the, you uh, know, in there, there is a matter of having plans on all this, but when you're taking money from the same interests that, you know, from military interest weapons manufacturers, and when your consultants are the same people that are on the conservative Republican side, you know, there's questions have to be asked. I mean, sure, you have these ideas, but how are you going to execute when everything, all the, the all the money and all the ideas, you, the, the consultants you have, um, are telling you to do things that they're telling the same thing on the other side. Frank in Niagara Falls, I pulled you up before I realized we uh, don't have time before the news. Can you can you hang on just a little longer here? Yes, sir. All right, we'll pop you on hold. You'll be the first caller out of the newscast. We have Brian Nowak here from Buffalo for Bernie and Erie County Democratic Elections Commissioner Len Lenahan a stand in this morning for Hillary Clinton. Much more to come. Republicans next too. It's Hardline on News Radio 930 WBEN. <laughs> from the WBN Newsroom. I'm Alan Harris. Here's what's happening. The death toll from the earthquake that struck Ecuador now stands at 77. It is expected to rise as rescuers reach the sparsely populated areas of fishing ports and tourist beaches. We had a report from reporter Stephen Kuffner. Recently, with heavy rains that have washed out many of the roads that connect the Andes with the Pacific coast, so there's a, a real risk that uh, rescue efforts will arrive very slowly. Meanwhile, Japanese rescue teams are scouring the splintered remains of buildings destroyed by a series of deadly earthquakes in southern Japan. Sky News reporter Kate Stallard is there. There are some 25,000 soldiers deployed here now, and we've seen them through the course of today, you know, delivering water, setting up bathing facilities, sanitation, particularly with the lack of running water for more than 400,000 people here. On CNN State of the Union, Republican presidential candidate John Kasich explaining why he doesn't like anything big, big government, big business. Big labor? Anything that's big, I felt, gets in my way or the way of the individual. It kind of gums up the works. It becomes a bureaucracy that in some cases is just not feeling. And it was a marathon day for Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders. Fresh off a trip to the Vatican, the Democratic presidential candidate returned to New York ahead of Tuesday's primary to take part in a panel discussion on social justice and politics. He told the PAC Brooklyn Church he's counting on young people to get out and vote, but felt good about his chances. I am optimistic because I have have gone throughout this country and I have seen the eyes of hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people and a lot of young people and those eyes are telling me 
that those young people understand that they are the future of this country. Buffalo police looking for the shooter who killed a city man yesterday afternoon. A 25-year-old man shot in the 100 block of Thatcher Avenue. He died of his wounds at ECMC. And the man who died in a balcony fall at the Pearl Street Grill on Friday night was a graduate student at Damon College. 24-year-old Tom Kirkovich of Lancaster, part of the Physician's Assistance Program. Police believe it was a tragic accident. First alert forecast today, mild with plenty of sunshine, the high 70. Mainly clear tonight, the low 44. Tomorrow, sunny to partly cloudy, the high up to 66. Tuesday, clouds and sun, the high 59. Right now, mostly sunny, 61 degrees. I'm Alan Harris, News Radio 930, WBEN. One great station, one great dial position, no confusion. News Radio 930 AM, WBEN. Are you a woman who has been recently widowed or divorced? These can be traumatic times when well-meaning friends and relatives try to tell you what to do. Catherine Christofferson of McCollum Christofferson Group has been a financial advisor for over 34 years. If you're suddenly facing divorce or the death of a spouse, call Catherine. Women in particular need to take time to weigh their options before making hasty decisions they may later regret. We recommend that no life-changing decisions be made until a personal financial plan is developed. If you're a widow with young kids, your situation is far different than a widow in her senior years. Same for divorcees. Call Catherine to make sure you take everything into account from the immediate needs of your family to your long-term financial goals. When the unexpected happens, our financial planning expertise can help you prepare for the future. Call Catherine of the McCollum Christofferson Group today at 854-5400. The McCollum Christofferson Group are registered investment advisor. For additional information about the firm, including fees, minimum account size, and services, call 854-5400. The Lacey is first for Ford. I know you want that new F-150, and now might be the perfect time. Take advantage of the DeLacy Ford Spring Trade-Up Event, offering top dollar on all trade-ins. Even if you have an existing balance on your current loan, DeLacy makes it easy for you to get into a brand new 2016 F-150 Super Cab with EcoBoost engine 20-inch wheels at an amazing lease price. No money down, security deposit waived, only $349 a month. Don't ask how they do it. $349 a month for 36 months with no money down. Security deposit waived. All on approved credit. Pay only taxes, fees, and first month payment. Do it signed. Looks like it's truck shopping tonight. The Lacey has always been first for four trucks. So whether you want an F-150, a 250, or a new commercial truck for your business, whether you're plowing, towing, or just want the sharpest, toughest truck around, you'll get the best selection from the guys who know Ford trucks better than anybody. Online and on lot at the Lacey. First for Ford, first for you. 36 monthly. So ACL Ford factory rebate supplies. Security deposit waived. 10,500 miles per year. 20 cents per mile over. Taxes, fees, and first payment. Do it signing. Offer expires. April 30th, 2016. Are you a police officer, firefighter, active, or retired member of the military? If so, stock up today at Straight Up Wines and Liquors. Owners Dan and Brenda offer a uniform discount, 10% off liquor, and 20% off wine on non-sale items. At Straight Up, you'll feel comfortable and get in and out in a hurry. Straight Up prices, straight up selection, straight up service for your wine and liquor needs. There's still a great liquor store in Kenmore. Head straight up to Elmwood at Washington and ask about our uniform discount. Discount. The number one volume Buick GMC dealer in New York State and the number one Buick Encore dealer in the whole country is West Her Buick GMC Cadillac of East Aurora. But right now, get into a brand new 2016 Buick Encore front wheel drive, $129 a month with zero down. Just $129 a month for a gorgeous new 2016 Buick Encore with zero down. That may explain the number one thing. $129 a month, zero down payment, no security deposit required. Just first payment, taxes, acquisition, and registration fees due at signing. 24 month lease, 10,000 miles per year, 25 cents per mile. Must lease through GM Financial, have a non GM lease in household, and take delivery by April 30th. Unless provided by manufacturer, lessee is responsible for all maintenance and excess wear and tear. Prior sales excluded. On approved credit, not all buyers qualify. Size claim based on General Motors reported new vehicle sales 2015 calendar year. Now at West Herb Buick GMC Cadillac of East Aurora, 535 Main Street, 15 minutes from the center of Western New York. They are number one. number one dance show, Flatley's Lord of the Dance Dangerous Games, is coming to Niagara Falls View Casino. From May 25th to June 5th, experience 40 of the world's most outstanding Irish dancers as Flatley's Lord of the Dance Dangerous Games performs live at Niagara Falls View Casino. Referred to a 
as a global phenomenon, Flatley's Lord of the Dance Dangerous Games features a thrilling percussion soundtrack as the audience embarks on an adventure of love, danger, and desire. Don't miss the highly anticipated Lord of the Dance Dangerous Games live at Niagara Falls View Casino. Visit fallsviewcasinoresort.com for tickets. Flatley's Lord of the Dance Dangerous Games live May 25th to June 5th at Niagara Falls View Casino. It's Hardline on News Radio 930. WBEN stand ins for the major Democratic and Republican presidential candidates in studio today. This, of course, right before Tuesday's primary. Let's get right back to it. Len Lenahan is here, Erie County Democratic Elections Commissioner, representing Hillary Clinton. Brian Nowak is here from the Buffalo for Bernie group. In just a little bit, about 10 minutes from now, we're going to bring in the Republican side. And you say, hey, Dave, you didn't give him equal time. But see, the Republican pie is divided into three pieces, and the Democratic pie divided only into two, so you're, you're all going to get a nice full full stomach, I, I promise. 803-0930. Let's uh, go to the calls. Frank, North uh, Ni Niagara Falls, quickly, you're on the air. Hi. Yeah, Hillary Clinton is an establishment Democrat who protected corporate fraud, supported a money-generating police state, insane gun laws, private prisons, and like Governor Cuomo, still keeps New Yorkers under the horror of Rockefeller drug laws. You know, I want a candidate who will end this totalitarian tyranny, and Bernie Sanders camp seems to be the only candidate to address these issues. All right, uh, Len Lenahan, Hillary Clinton, war on drugs. Well... Let's face it, she has got a detailed plan to deal with um, drugs as we are in, in, in society as we are today. Um, she's for reforming the maximum minimum sentence for drug offenses uh, that are nonviolent. And she wants to peel back uh, basically what everybody agrees was an overzealous uh, uh, plan in 1994 that, by the way, Bernie Sanders voted for as well to. Uh, for, the, the criminal crime bill. So she wants to roll back uh, minimum, maximum sentences for drug-related nonviolent offenses, and I think that'll go a long way towards establishing uh, some justice that needs to be addressed. Brian, know what well, biggest difference to between the two of them on drug policy? Well, as far as the '94 crime bill, Sanders voted for an assault weapons ban and for the Domestic Violence Act, and he spoke out against the the crime aspects of that bill, the criminal justice parts of it. Uh, he hasn't taken money from private prisons like Clinton and, and, and Rubio and other candidates have. Um, and he's not going to be connected to those Panama Papers like Clinton possibly could be. But on the war on drugs, do both of them have basically the same policy? Repeal Rockefeller, decriminalize marijuana? Well, Sanders has introduced yes. legislation to get marijuana out of the Controlled Substances Act on the federal level entirely. Hillary simply wants to get it out of Schedule 1, making it Schedule 2. What Sanders is doing is opening the door of marijuana legalization, which will happen. He's moving down there. But the war on drugs isn't just marijuana. we got to talk about right. the entire Controlled Substances Act. And when you're taking money from private prisons and you're defending on pharmaceutical money, you, how much can you do to actually address these things without upsetting your donors? When it comes to private prisons, Hillary Clinton favors eliminating private prisons. She's against, you know, look at people contribute to campaigns with hope of, you know, certainly gaining access to candidates. When it comes to private prisons, Hillary Clinton favors eliminating private prisons altogether. John in Rochester, quickly, we're going to try and squeeze everyone in. Go. Hey, Dave. Hey, hey Len. Well, and, uh, Hillary's had a lot of baggage, but one of the things, I'm reading a book right now, uh, uh, Clinton's War on Women, and, and in the book it, it documents numerous uh, sexual assaults and rapes that Bill Clinton committed, and Hillary was complicit in the cover-ups and trashing some of the uh, accusers. Do you think this would be a huge uh, issue in a campaign when Trump... Especially in a general. Len, go. It's always been a part of the Republican uh, right-wing attack machine. None of that has ever been... Hillary Clinton has never been accused of anything of that magnitude at all. Matter of fact, she's been a fighter for women's rights. Um, unprecedented as, as First Lady in Beijing at the first conference on women. She stood up to the, to the communists on rights for women. Today, she's for equal pay. She's for uh, pay equity. So if, if it comes down to a general election between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, you don't see him using that card as he did earlier and say, hey, she, she helped uh, help Bill well, Clinton well, Donald with Trump his infidelities? Donald Trump's unfavorability amongst women are 73%. He has been the most 
I have to tell you, he has said things that I find astonishing. That he says to women in it, but not only Rosie O'Donnell types, but Carly Fiorina. I mean, he has been the most insulting. A candidate for women that I, that I think in our country's history, I, don't, I think Hillary Clinton will win this election against Donald Trump with women's vote probably two to three to one. Is that her big vulnerability, the women, uh, Bernie's big vulnerability, rather, Brian, the women's vote? All I'm going to say about the last caller's comment is we're going to be reliving the 1990s if Hillary Clinton is our nominee. And whether or not the attacks are fair, they're going to happen for three months. Well, let's talk about the, but, but, but please, let's talk about the 1990s. It was the largest time of economic prosperity in our country's history. 23 million jobs were created during the Clinton administration, and it ended with a balanced budget, which we haven't seen since that time. So what part of the 90s didn't you like? Was it the peace or the prosperity? Um, I think I think we'll run on the 1990s at any time at all. Rosalind Buffalo, ISIS, go ahead. Oh, yes, thank you for taking my call. I just want to say that, I yes, this is ISIS-related, but I agree with Mr. Linehan that Hillary has the expertise and will bridge international and national communication and policies to the advantage of the United States. And what's really happening here is all this political goofiness is creating more fear, anxiety, deceit, and stress, and it's taking our focus, I mean the government's focus, the United States of America, and what Hillary could do, away from ISIS and ISIL. I don't think either of these guys would disagree, but uh, specifically, uh, do you have a question in there? Uh, yes, I do. That I think my question basically is, is that, to Mr. Lenahan, is that I do agree with him that uh, uh, Hillary has expertise, and she wasn't the military strategist. Leave that up to the Air Force, the National Guard, the Army, the Navy, the, and that the fact that, you know, they're trying to denigrate her with a Benghazi email, it's ridiculous. All right, Rosalind, that's more of a comment than a question, so I'll have Brian try to respond to it. You notice that I didn't mention Benghazi at all when talking about Hillary Clinton's foreign policy judgment. Put that aside. There are other things that she has done, enabling the military dictatorship in Honduras. Um, her her dealings with Iran, you know, and in, in helping to get that agreement together to where, uh, but that agreement wouldn't have been necessary if we didn't have a CIA coup in 1953. So the kind of things that are being done were done at the State Department under her watch were closer to the foreign policy we have done for five, six decades. We need to be smart about our involvement in the world. We can't just go into any war we want to. We just can't meddle with every single government that we want to. And when you're getting advice from the same people that Ted Cruz is getting and you're getting money from the same people that people on the other side of the aisle are do, we have to be very concerned about that. I promise we'll get to jobs, lend quick rebuttal, and then we'll talk on that. Right. We, again, we can't talk about 1953 right now. We got to worry about what's going on um, in 2016. All right. Hillary I'm Clinton negotiated. She brought the Iranians to the table because of the sanctions she's, she put together, imposing on Iran. And she pushed now, we're now the sanctions. But by the way, we're now talking about peace, not war. And when it comes to Israel, the hottest spot in the in the world right now, in the Middle East, that's where she has her most experience. She negotiated the peace treaty between Israel and Hamas. She is the most qualified at the most difficult time in our history to take on the hottest spots in this world. We should be happy that she's a candidate for the presidency of the United States. On jobs, what can your candidate do to create them? Because I, I'm sure there are a lot of folks out there that would say it's not government's role anyway. Well, Dave, let me take that. Hillary Clinton has a detailed um, proposal for uh, investment in our infrastructure, in clean energy, and in scientific and medical research. All that can spawn hundreds of thousands of jobs. Boost those three with federal funding? How, how does she do it? With a and when it comes to the infrastructure, she set up a private public inf infrastructure bank that would rely on investments in the public and private sector to heal our infrastructure in this country. When it comes to the medical research, I mean, she's shown by the project here in Buffalo. The Buffalo-Niagara Medical Corridor is a result of investments by the federal government that went on during her term as senator in the early uh, 2000s and is now spawning tremendous investment and jobs in West New York, good paying jobs. Brian, she's shown yes. she knows how she can do it. This goes back to who your donors are. You know, we're going to get this clean energy plan, but when you're taking money from, you know, oil and coal interest, uh, how committed can you be to that? And, you know, to, to we need abrupt action quickly. And Sanders has put together a program to address climate change. What, what, as far as jobs go, yeah, please, he's jobs. talked about a trillion dollar investment plan that's going to create up to 13 million jobs, repairing bridges, sewers, aging water pipes, uh, in, in investing in clean energy. There's a lot of work we need to do as far as infrastructure goes, and both candidates on 
the Democratic side, side have plans to deal with them. And it's one thing to have plans. It's another thing to be beholden to certain interests. Sanders has gotten six million individual donations from regular people. He owes favors to all of us. And he has to take care of all of us, not just a couple donors. In lieu of closing statements, uh, 30 seconds each guy, why Hillary Clinton instead of Bernie Sanders? And Brian, why Bernie Sanders instead of Hillary Clinton? She's the most prepared for the job. She has the best chance of winning the job. And when she gets in that job, she has the most well-thought-out, detailed plans and thorough plans to deal with our country's future. Try and go. Bernie Sanders has inspired Republicans to leave the Republican Party and register as Democrats. He's gotten independents to turn out in large numbers for him. And young people are voting for him in huge margins. He's going to drive turnout in November and help down the race ticket in a way that Clinton could as well. But he's going to do much better on it. Uh, all right. Dave, let me just say this. This is a huge election. Um, we're going to be electing 18 delegates from Western New York alone. That's bigger than six or seven states in our country. I just urge everyone to get out and vote. Vote for Hillary Clinton, and she'll get the job done for us. All right. Brian, you have the last word because he just said vote for Hillary. Yeah, well, vote for Bernie. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, sure, there's 18 delegates up. Yeah, you know, and, and vote for the Bernie delegates. Vote, vote row A on, uh, on the Democratic ticket on April 19th. We are out of time. I did want to uh, squeeze in a little bit longer segment with Republicans because there's more of them. Guys, thanks for playing. Good good time today. Thanks.